Okay, today we're answering your questions, and today's question is on player-only meetings. You've probably heard of it. Oh, the team behind closed doors had a players-only meeting. Well, what the hell does that mean? What happens back there? I'm going to give you some examples because I've been a part of player meetings a bunch of times during my career. So let's talk about it. Okay, so first thing is a players-only meeting, well, pretty self-explanatory. It's players only. Coaches, managers, get the hell out. Everyone, get the hell out. It's just the players. And usually these meetings are called when things are going bad, like really bad. You don't have a players only meeting when things are going good or even when they're just going like so-so. It's usually like things are going bad. So if you hear that there's a players only meeting, you can assume that someone is going to get screamed at in this meeting and things are going really bad. Now, on most of the teams I played on, there were very few meetings during the year. And honestly, for teams where things are going really, really well, there's only like two meetings during the year a lot of times. There's a meeting at the beginning of the year to kind of introduce the season, and then there's a meeting at the end of the year to conclude the season. These are the only major meetings during the season. And that's like a great season, right? And I'm not talking about Listen, there are meetings during the year as far as like scouting reports and stuff like that, but those are small meetings. I'm talking about like big, big meetings, okay? So in a great year, there's a meeting at the beginning of the year, there's a meeting at the end of the year, and, and that's it. And those can be, those are usually with the manager and the team and the coaches, and, and that's everybody, okay? So that's generally how meetings work. But again, let's get back to player-only meetings. So let's start with this. On bad teams, nobody leads. There are no leaders. On good teams, coaches lead. On great teams, players lead. Because players, those are the guys that you're around all the time, right? And yeah, I mean, you're around your coaches and your manager and stuff like that. But I mean, as a player, you're with the players all the time. You're with the players in the clubhouse, right? Like the manager and the coaches, they don't, the manager and the coaches don't hang out in the clubhouse. Like the players are together in the clubhouse. The players are together in the weight room. The players are together in the cages. The players are together at the hotels, at dinners, on flights. I mean, players are around players. So it's really, really important. On great teams, in my experience, the players are the ones that lead. Okay, the second thing is that every team's different. There are some teams where you don't have very many or any vocal leaders, right? So not many players wanna wanna talk. You don't have someone that's gonna call a player's meeting. Things things could be going terribly, but you don't have a player that's gonna call it. Some teams do. Typically, those players are veteran players, although not always. Sometimes it's a young player, especially in today's game. The game's getting younger and younger. When I played a while ago, there were a lot of veterans, a lot of guys that were that were much older. So typically, these, these player meetings are going to be called by a veteran player, um, typically a captain if your team has captains. That's usually who's going to call the meeting. And usually in these meetings, they're going to happen in the clubhouse, and it's typically going to be one, maybe two guys, again, typically veteran players that are going to talk and everyone else is going to shut up and listen. All right, that's a that's a good lesson for you. Like, don't be an idiot that gets up and tries to talk when 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 you shouldn't. Some sometimes, I mean, I've seen this stuff where like the guy that's the main problem gets up and starts to talk, and everyone's like, "Dude, you're the problem!" Like, shut up and sit down. So usually, it's just one or two guys that are going to talk. Everyone else is going to shut up and listen. One quick, and this wasn't even like an organized thing. Sometimes these can be like spontaneous. Honestly. We were playing against the Dodgers and the game had just ended. And it wasn't like we said, okay, we have a players meeting at uh, 1045, be there, sharp, don't be late. Like honestly, we lost the Dodgers. We weren't playing well at all. And Jake Peavy basically just like started a players only meeting. He didn't call for it. He just started yelling. <laughs> he just, he was just pissed because we were playing like crap. We didn't have a ton of energy. We had a lot of young guys that were kind of uncertain, right? A lot of guys making their debuts and hadn't been in the big leagues for a long time. And then you get Jake Peavy, a guy that is, you know, every year one of the best pitchers in the NL at that time. And he was like one of the most fierce competitors. I was actually, when I played defense behind him, like I was scared to make a mistake because I didn't want him to rip my head off. Great guy, like super nice guy. But 
when I played second, like I could hear him like talking to himself. And if you watch PB pitch, like you could see him like mouthing stuff and yelling in his glove and all that stuff. Like I could hear that too on the field. So it's like, this guy is super intense, super focused. He wants to beat the hell out of the competition. He wants to win so bad. He wants to win every single pitch. And so he was pissed that he didn't feel like everyone was, was giving their all um, or competing as hard as they should have been because he was a competitor. He wanted people to compete like him. And so he laid into everybody and he basically told everyone, you better get your shit together and you better show up tomorrow ready to kick somebody's ass. That was basically the message from him. Uh, and he said it even more colorfully than that. But I mean, again, in my mind, that, that's a player only meeting. It was just players. Again, it, it wasn't called, but here's a veteran player Basically, the captain of our team said, we're not going to play like this. And he let everybody know. And so they don't always happen like this. Sometimes, again, they're called. But they're usually a really good way of just like putting in that. There's, there's an issue, right? There's an issue, whether it's a lack of hustle or it's players being selfish or uh, players aren't committed, right? Like there's a lot of things that you can talk about. But if there's an issue and it's constant, and usually these veteran players will see it because they've been around the game a long time and they've seen how good teams act and they see, you know, sometimes they, they're around a bad team and they see how they act. And so, you know, these guys have seen it all and they know what it takes to win, especially really, really good players. And like, this is a way to just put it into a quick, call it out in front of everybody and let the team know that it's not acceptable. Like this isn't the way we're going to do it. And we've got to change fast because, you know, I know there's a lot of games in a baseball season and we've talked how it, it's a roller coaster, but you know, you start going on a skid, like it can really hurt you no matter what time of year it is. Right. And so you're trying to stay even keeled. You're trying to continually win and it's hard to win at any level, especially in the big leagues, but you can't go into these, you know, you don't want the season to be like this. You want to try to keep it like that. And so if you notice something coming up that's that's not helping your team win, that's a problem. Maybe it's a player, a couple of players, or maybe it's the whole damn team. Like, you want to cut that as quickly as possible. And that's what these team meetings will do for you. So again, these are a great way to say, this is why we're not winning. Right here. Boom, 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 boom. Or sometimes also I've seen it, it's like, maybe we don't know yet why we're not winning, but we gotta figure, we gotta figure it out. So the team meeting is like, fellas. What the hell is going on? We're going to sit in here and we're going to figure out what we have to do differently because what we're doing ain't working. So we got to figure out what we're going to do differently. And then it's an opportunity to come together as a team and figure it out. So hopefully that gives you some insight into what a players only meeting is like. Also keep in mind that there is no magic wand. There's no magic pill. There's no magic bullet. And so just because you have a players only meeting, it doesn't mean that it's going to solve everything. There's plenty of teams that have player meetings and things don't get corrected, right? But it can help. It can work, but it doesn't mean it's always going to work. If that was the case, everyone would just have a players only meeting when they start losing a few games and boom, we'd be back on our winning ways. Like the White Sox, like, you know, they wouldn't have 162 losses at this point. They would have their player only meeting and then we're winning. So it, it, it doesn't always mean that you're going to win, but if things are going bad, it is a way to try to stop the losing and get back on the winning ways. And I have seen it turn around teams and I've also seen it really have no effect. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. And we'll talk to you later.